It's common knowledge that movies about real events take liberties with the facts, sometimes a lot of them. But when the events in question involve journalists at work, maybe our standards should be higher. Here's Adam again. I've never known a guy more talented at untangling politics so that anyone can understand. It is a gift. In the new movie, The Front Runner, Democratic presidential candidate Gary Hart is just what the country needs. But he's taken down by hatchet journalism from the Miami Herald and political editor Tom Fiedler. You're running for president? I'm aware of that, Tom. It's in the paper. Well, you have a responsibility. I know full well what my responsibilities are. Do you know yours? The front runner says Fiedler didn't, and that his paper's coverage of Hart changed American politics for the worse. But writing in the Herald, Fiedler says the movie gets key details wrong, from his appearance to his reporting. If so, it's not the first film about journalism to get tripped up. And, and we're talking about seven alleged victims over, what, eight years? In Spotlight, Boston College spokesman Jack Dunn tries to cover up the priest's sex abuse scandal, a portrayal that made the real Jack Dunn cry foul. They assign language to me, dialogue to me, that I not only never said, but is the exact opposite of what I did on behalf of the high school. Eventually, Spotlight's producers issued a statement that agreed, but there's been no comparable mea culpa involving The Post, which lionizes that paper's publication of the Pentagon Papers. What will happen? we don't publish. We will lose. The country will lose. In fact, the New York Times drove that story and won a Pulitzer for its efforts. I know movies about true stories aren't always true. Still, when those stories involve journalism, more accuracy wouldn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, first of all, right. what's it like watching a movie when one of the main characters on the screen right. is based on you. It, it was um, almost literally an out-of-body experience to be sitting there watching it and to see this. Um, and see Steve Zissis is yeah. the actor, by the way, and he shows up with a full bushy beard and um, and and physically, I think, looks like me. It, it was kind of wow. And uh, uh, Tony Scott, the movie critic for the New York Times, described my character as as a craven and uh, um, the villain of the piece. And I felt, wow, this is. <laughs> This so far. Is me. What are my grandchildren going to think when they say this? But, uh, but you know, I think it goes back to uh, that. Uh, the thing that is uh, troublesome is uh, uh, is that there was no consent, either sought or given. I don't know what that means. I'm told that I'm something of a public figure because I was a political columnist or something. But you would think just out of um, uh, a desire to get the facts somewhat straight that I would have had mm -hmm. some ability to weigh yeah, in. That was troubling. They did with Spotlight. They really tried to yes. portray, I mean, um, they nailed it with Marty uh, Barron. Yeah. You have to Shreveman's name. And I just have to say, as somebody who remembers you from 1984 when this whole thing was happening, it was 84, right? Oh. I mean, I remember you on CNN. I remember what you looked like. <laughs> I thought... You know, that is just so far off Not base. Yeah. yeah, that didn't look like me, yeah, so forth. But uh, uh, you know, apparently they have uh, the right to do that, and there's probably a line. I, I don't think that I was uh, treated, uh, I, my character was assassinated. I don't think it went mm. there. But it was a caricature. And the director told me, I asked him about that, he said that the role of the actor who has my name, is to really just contribute to the overall narrative he wants to have. And so he needed someone to be the kind of low-life, sleazy tabloid, tabloid. reporter. And I happen to be... Uh, but the, but the Miami Herald wasn't that either. Well, no, but the Herald <laughs> is characterized as a somewhat tabloidish yeah. paper. Uh, mm. So, uh, yeah, we were, we were mm. um, I think, again, the bad guys. Mm. I, I've always found it strange that you have... Uh, fictional movies that allegedly have real people, but then you put words in their mouth that they never said. I, I don't get the genre. I really don't, e even though some very good movies have come out of it, like Spotlight. Uh, not to take issue with Adam, but having watched The Post, the whole movie is about how the New York Times did in fact beat The Post and how The Post tries to catch up. I mean, that's that's the plot of the movie, um, and yet I know that there were hard feelings at the Times over that movie. There's always hard feelings. There were people at the Washington Post who stopped talking to each other over all the president's men because of people who were not portrayed, who hmm. wanted to be in the movie. It's, it's kind of a difficult thing. 
Um, I just recall watching Selma, which is not a journalism movie, and I know that uh, information very well from doing a documentary and listening to a speech by the character Martin Luther King saying, wow, why didn't I use I that, that one? That, that's so good. <laughs> and finding out afterwards was completely created yeah. uh, because they could not get the family to give uh, them the license. Mm. Um, so it was actually very, it was so good. It was very close to what he would have said. Mm. It, it, it did exactly opposite of what they did to you, Tom. It did portray what he was trying to say, just different words. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, these things happen all the time, but what I get very upset about is that people take it away as the real story yeah. because nobody knows history. Right. And uh -huh. people don't go back and look up to see, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but Oliver Stone with the I JFK. Know. I I'm know. just, it's just saying crazy. This, this makes me very story. unhappy because there are lots of folks walking around yeah. with twisted ideas of what the history is. And right about now, we can't afford to have twisted history mm -hmm. in journalism. People actually need to know what really happened. And, it, and those stories are good enough, by the way. They're mm -hmm. pretty dramatic. Yeah, in and of themselves. And don't get me started on a civil action, which was yeah, uh, yeah, a fictionalized yeah. story about a story I covered for years. Yeah. Well, I think you're just too nice a guy. Yeah, yeah, really. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You know, I, I don't have a problem with it. It's Hollywood, right? And ultimately, they, they need to make money with these movies. And sometimes when they look at the various different characters, they think, well, this person might be a little, with all due respect, too boring. a little bit too boring. <laughs> 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 and so they, 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 they right. need to kind of, you know, jazz it up a little bit because they want audiences to root for one side and yeah. dislike another character. And it's, it's all about the money. It's, mm -hmm. uh, if we're talking about a, a serious news documentary, uh, then I have a problem with it. We're talking about a news story, uh, then I have a problem with it. Well, Hollywood is there to entertain and to make money. Hmm. But Hope they don't to make Emily's point, you. though, they really took time with the reporters yeah. in Spotlight. Yes. That was right yeah. on. So it was so unnecessary yeah. to take a swipe at this guy for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, it didn't make, it made no it sense. Was, it was a good enough story in itself. It was. Say, and right? they were right. Story. They studied those people. They got yeah. it right. There's and a producer yeah. or sub, there's yeah. somebody involved in the project who decided, but I want this. Yeah. Yeah. And this happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway. I haven't seen so, it yet, but I plan to. All right.